Hey guys, how's it going? Eric Norris here. Today, I'm making a video that I do not want to make, but I know it will bring a lot of people some good. This week, I lost my mom. And, uh, but the Lord has been with me through it all. I've drawn near to him. I've been reading his promises and he's getting me through this. There's never a good time for a tragic loss like this to happen. But if we can prepare ourselves and draw near to him ahead of time, that will really, truly help uh, to get through this. Um, so anyway, there's been some amazing miracles and things that have been happening that I want to share with you guys through this all. And I want to document this too for me to look back upon because, you know, the, the miracles that are happening and the amazing works that he's doing through me and to me are truly amazing. So, so here goes. Uh, I got the phone call, the dreaded phone call nobody wants. I got it on Tuesday of this last week. And the way it was told to me was rather harsh. It wasn't said in a gentler manner. And um, But the Lord still protected me and he's protecting me and he's prepared me for this uh leading up to this the last eight weeks as some of you know i've been going up to liberty kentucky and hanging out with my friend titus and helping build the church uh being a volunteer up there doing all kinds of different things and fellowshipping and reading the word and just being edified and fortified and being influenced by good old Titus. And um, it's been a true blessing. And the Lord has drawn me closer to him through this time. My faith has been stronger through this time. And the Lord knew what was happening. He was orchestrating this whole thing. And because he was preparing me for what I had in store. And so, so Tuesday, um, you know, I got that news and I was concerned the past day or two for my mom anyway, because I hadn't heard from her, because we, um, my relationship with her, we have been very close. And um, especially the last couple of years and even more so the last couple of months. And so um, that doesn't make things easier when you're that close to someone. But I do believe that it was the Lord's time, it was her time, 77 years is a good amount of time. But keep in mind, we're only here in just a twinkling of an eye. We're here, we're just specks of dust. We're here for such a short time. So compared to life and eternity in heaven. So that's what we have to remember. Um, but since I've received the news and, and going through this and figuring everything out, um, I've just had angels surrounding me. this whole time and I know it I can tell I've never experienced God so closely than I have now and so miracles are happening so one amazing thing that has happened through this is I have not spoken to my brother in probably about 12 years. And God flew those doors, flung those doors wide open. Because of my mom's passing, it has drawn me and my brother near to each other. And I can't even explain to tell you How beautiful that is. And I've had some great people, angels, be there at the right time, the right places. And so the first night I had a friend come by, bring food. 
and just be there for me. That was such a blessing. I'm so grateful that I didn't call. I didn't say, hey, I need you. They just showed up. And just remember, we need to do that for other people too. We need to not wait for a phone call. We just need to show up. Just remember how important that is. We need to do that. Because if you call, they're going to be like, no, nah, you know, I'm busy or whatever. You just have to take the initiative and do it. So I'm very grateful for my friend to just show up and be there for me. We played uh, some card games, a game called Speed. I had never played it before. And that was keeping my mind occupied for the time being. Because when you hear that news so in that, um, that first day, it gets a little easier every day, but it's never easy. Um, it, you know, everyone grieves differently too. So this is just my experience. But so anyway, and then the very next day, I talked, I believe it was Wednesday, I talked with my brother for two hours. <laughs> I, could, I, I couldn't believe it. To, to hear his voice again is truly God orchestrating this. I lose my mom. I'm broken and shattered on the ground. And he just scoops me up and gives me my brother back. And so the funny thing through all this is I am, when I break down, it's less because I lost my mom and more because God is just showing me so much mercy right now. And I, I'm, I, I understand it and I'm feeling this. And so, oh my gosh. So, so then the very next day, I think we talked for about three hours. And so... I can't even begin to tell you what that is. To think you've never talked to your brother again because of health issues, because of circumstances, and to be able to spend that much time on the phone with them after losing someone special, it's just like it f completely filled the void instantly, so to speak. And so... Um, God has given me a new challenge, but also a new duty, something I'm looking forward to do, and that's helping out my brother and, and his wife and to do all that I can to be there for them as well because not only is God administering to me, but I'm administering right back to other people. Right now, the Lord, the great Lord, our good shepherd, has given me so much strength through this and so much of his word that my cup is overfilling right now and I need to I need to spread the gospel. I need to let other people know what he's doing through me right now. And so um, I am just grateful and I ask that you guys would pray for me and my brother in this situation that the Lord would just continue to heal us and for his wife and just to ask to Make sure that the Lord stays with us. He is with us. It all depends on how close we draw to him. You know, he's always there. We just need to take the initiative to draw close to him. And so anyway, um, and so then, so that was Thursday we talked. And then Friday, I flew out um, to where I am now. I'm at an Airbnb right now here in Southern California. And I'm just down the road from my mom's house because I'm going to have to be dealing with all this stuff. But what was amazing on Friday before my flight, I played around a disc golf. And this is just the Lord just giving me so much peace and comfort right now. I'm playing disc golf and I'm on hole number seven. Very hard shot to get an ace on. Sidearm, boom, in the basket. And I immediately broke down. I just started bawling because I knew in that instant that it happened, I knew the Lord knew that he was going to give that to me to just ease my soul, to ease my heart, to just comfort me. And it was such a blessing. And so that's why I broke down because I knew that was from the Lord. That was, that was my mom, you know. And so, uh, so that was a blessing. And then, and then what was amazing about go, getting on the flight was because of the night before and having this long conversation with my brother and everything that's going on, I forgot to check in 
on my Southwest flight the day before. But the Lord had me. The Lord took care of it. So I had a like a really high number. It was C something, 17. So I'm like one of the last people to get on the plane. Well, lo and behold, God took care of things. I walk in and the, I got a seat on the very first row. I had two angels that were on each side of me on that entire flight. And it, this is how God works. This is so funny. Just an hour before, I had my iPod. I said, okay, I'm gonna be listening to my music on the flight. You know, I need the distraction. I need some healing. And I looked and it was working fine, full battery. This is what's so crazy. I get on the plane, I sit down between these two people. I get the iPod out. I know, I said iPod because you know. <laughs> I wanted to have music while I was on the plane. And so anyway, I hit play. It just stopped working. I, get, I tried to restart it, nothing. I'm like, if this was just working. That was the Lord doing his work because I said, okay, well, I kept trying everything for like five minutes and I said, okay, this isn't working, put it away. What did I grab next? I grabbed the Bible. And the second I picked up that Bible out of my bag, both women on each side of me, I had a beautiful, wonderful African-American lady on one side and a beautiful white woman uh, Sunday school teacher on the other side. Both know and have a relationship with Christ. And instantaneously, when she saw that Bible, she said, oh, thank God, praise Jesus. I am so glad that you pulled that Bible out. She's like, I've been praying for someone. You know, I was telling my so-and-so, my family member, that I would have someone, you know, to be with next to me on the flight. Because, you know, flights are tough because you're like squeezed in there. and it's... But I'll tell you what, <laughs> this was despite all the pain and all the brokenness that I'm going through at this moment, it was surprisingly the most, the best airplane flight I've ever had because the Lord put me beside these two angels and we administered to each other the entire time. And um, it was such a blessing. The one on my left, she was had the gift of prophecy and told me some amazing things. The one on my right just had this constant smile and was just a blessing to me in so many ways as well. And I was, she told me something very interesting and um, I don't know if I'll reveal it on this video, but maybe in another time. But, and then our flight attendant, she, she was an angel because I've, she was so, a few things happened that was very interesting. She was, her smile just like lit up the room and she, you could just tell, like, I, I feel like she was an agent of the Lord because um, she was so ha happy and smiley and everything. And, you know, that rubs off on people. I'm sitting here brokenhearted going through, you know, misery. And I see her and I'm like, huh, influence is real. It rubs off on you. I'm like, hmm. And so we had this, I had this moment with her that she, it's one of those things when you look at people dead in the eyes and you just kind of know or see something, something is revealed. I had that moment with her. She looked at me and I could tell she had this understanding almost of what I was going through. And it was like this peaceful moment of just comfort and understanding. It was, and it was just a, in a split instant. I was like, whoa, that was interesting. So anyway, I never expected to have such a wonderful flight given the circumstances. So these are just those things that God is just scooping me up from the ashes, from my brokenness, from everything that I've been going through and that I'm gonna be continuing to go through. And so um, another blessing was I had my friend Mikey be so kind to pick me up from the airport and be there for me. And then, you know, I had to tell him all the good news of all these amazing things that were happening for me 
to me during this time because if I just said, oh, you know, I'm broken, I'm crying, I'm sad, then he was going to feel that and it's just like, I don't want to say a negative situation, but it's like, despite the negative situation, let me tell you about all the amazing things that I am going through that are just, the Lord has had his hand upon me this whole entire time and it's just been an unbelievable thing. And so anyway, I was just, another blessing was just having Mikey come pick me up from the airport, taking me to in and out Praise Jesus for in and out <laughs> you know? Um, and so, uh, and, and this Airbnb has been a total blessing as well. Uh, the Lord provided this. I, I did little research. I got on there for a quick amount of time. There wasn't anything much available. I just kind of booked it without even looking. And it's like been the perfect little thing, Airbnb spot. I've got everything I need here. I'm fairly close to my mom's house. And so um, just some amazing miracles are just happening right now. And um, I, I had to get on here to talk to you guys and tell you guys about this because if you have the cure for cancer, are you going to keep it to yourself? No. If you have if you have this knowledge, if you know in your heart that God is touching your life and your soul, why would you keep it a secret? We need to be bold, especially in the time we're living in right now. We need to preach the gospel in Jesus name. Oh, so I just ask you guys to pray for me during this time because I'm going to have to go through a mess of things um, that I'll be dealing with. But the Lord has prepared me. I am ready for the challenge. He's giving me strength. I, he's giving me this supernatural strength that I've never experienced before in my life. I had, my, you know, my dad passed in 2010 and the Lord prepared me for that. And, um, you know, but it's never easy. There's never a right time for it. Uh, so that was a blessing, but there's some real miraculous supernatural healing and guidance and comfort and love and peace that is happening right now. Oh, a, a couple other miracles. I need to mention this too. This is so good. I mean, there's probably a multitude of things I'm leaving out, but I'm just telling you guys, the Lord works through us. Two days ago, the, I'd say, yeah, the last two days, the last two mornings, woken up with pains in my heart. One of the days I had a massive headache too. I'm going through all this, right? I prayed to our heavenly father, Lord, I just ask that you remove this pain from me. Please, dear Lord, in Jesus name, amen. It was gone. Whether that was the placebo effect or the Lord, I already know the Lord's doing all these things. I believe it's the Lord. And so the next morning when I had the headache and the, the heart pains, I prayed again and instantly, I, I went back to sleep. And instantly when I woke up right after that, that very next moment, my headache, everything was gone when I awoke. And so um, there are so many things. I even made notes here because I, I don't want to forget this. Um, yeah, another blessing is the fact that, I'm, I'm going to backtrack here, but the months leading up to all this, my mom got to see the fruits of her labor working through me by going up, helping Titus, helping build the church. And that's something that no mother could ever, you can never take that away from. She got to see the fruits of her labor, what she's been praying for all these years. That's such a blessing, you know? And now she's with the arms of our Savior. She's in the best place you could ever be. Here's another miracle that's happened. So I've had her friends reach out to me too. And this has been incredible. So one of her friends had mentioned that her son uh, committed suicide. So, and she had to go through that. And she said, at that time, that my mom came into her life and changed her life and she's never been the same and i can't even begin to tell you how beautiful that is just so you guys know 
My mom was a faithful servant of the Lord. More than I can ever really explain. When we were kids, we didn't realize it. We, my mom was always on the phone recruiting people to her Bible studies and all the things. And she's always so outgoing. She's like, oh yeah. And we, you know, as kids be like, oh yeah. Be all funny and joking about it. But as I've gotten older and wiser and closer with the Lord, he's opened up my eyes to truly show me how incredible her ministry has been over the years and the lives she's affected. Another story, a thing that had happened, I believe it was a Monday. My mom's closest friend of 26 years, she got this um, vision or notion, and uh, I'm trying to paraphrase it to make sure I say it fairly correct, but basically she said she heard my mom's voice saying, I, I'm in the greatest place ever. It is so beautiful here. And she didn't know what that meant at the time because she didn't know what had happened yet. And then once she found out the news, she realized that my mom just gave her the good news that she was up there. So I just ask you guys if, if those of you that don't know the Lord, please, if you have doubts, ask him. Say, are you real, Lord? Please show me. Test him. He will show you. And for those of you that might be believers, renew your faith with the Lord. Now is the time to draw close to him. Now is the time for you to be fortified and edified so that you will be built up and be able to weather the storms because we're it's inevitable. Loss trials, tribulations, the hardships. We, we all go through it on this planet. So while we're here, I encourage you and challenge you to draw near to the Lord now. Do not wait. And for those of you that don't know Christ and want to give your life to him, just ask him, tell him right now, say, Dear Lord, I pray that you would come into my life Lord, I pray, I ask that you show me that you are real. And Lord, I just want to get to know you more. And Lord, please forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a simple prayer. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to have the perfect words to talk to him. He knows what you're going to say beforehand. Oh, man. This has been a crazy time. It's insane. But I had to document this. And I, I want the world to hear this. I want the world to know the greatness and beauty and insanely powerful blessings and love and peace and comfort and understanding and fruits that he is given us and is that we are doing for other people. And I hope I'm an encouragement to you guys. I'm going to be getting through this. It's not easy, but with the Lord on our side, we can do anything. We can do anything when we have the Lord with us. Just remember that. Anything is possible for him who believes. So I hope you guys have a great day. I encourage you to stay close. When this video is done, pick up a Bible or just turn off your phone and start praying. Maybe you've already done that, some of you. But please, I encourage you, don't hesitate. Don't wait. You never know how long you're going to live. We may not be here tomorrow. So please, give your life to Christ. It is the greatest decision you will ever make in your entire life. I, On the word of our Heavenly Father, I promise in His name, He is a good, good Father. Draw near to Him. All right, guys, have a good one.